What's the difference between self-hardening and judicial hardening? And why do you think God would harden someone? Um, this is a great question. And I think it really does help to understand the provisionist perspective versus a typical Calvinist or maybe even Arminian perspective, because we don't believe in total inability from birth. And therefore the concept of hardening is an actual uh, uh, condition that one can grow into where they become uh, ever seeing and ever perceiving, ever hearing and ever understanding. They're not born ever seeing and ever perceiving, ever hearing and understanding. In other words, that's not a condition you're born with. You're, you can become that way. This is why Hebrews 3 and 4 warns, uh, when you hear the voice of God, do not harden your hearts. That would be self-hardening. And so like we see in Acts 28, 27, when it says they close their eyes, otherwise they might see, hear, understand, and turn, and I would heal them. Well, they are the ones who close their eyes. Uh, it, God has nothing to do with the fact that they close their eyes. They're, it's not a condition they were born under because of the fall of Adam. It's not something that they are just imputed with, like they just have their eyes just born shut from birth, spiritually speaking, and they just it's still born in a sense that they're and they're an, unable to, to respond to God's truth. That's just not what we believe. We believe that you can become that way if you close your eyes. And so you can become blind by closing your eyes, but that's your doing. And we believe that makes you more blameworthy. So we believe that mankind is more blameworthy because they close their eyes versus they were born blind. So there's a big difference between those two things. I think intuitively we understand that. If somebody just closed their eyes to the truth um, because they, they want to reject it versus somebody being born blind, who's more, who's more guilty in those two situations? Objectively speaking, even Calvinists have to admit, yeah, the provisionist side does make men more guilty because they're doing something that they could have re resisted. They, they could have done otherwise. They could have looked at the light. They could have uh, observed the light and received the light, but they chose to close their eyes versus they were born with their eyes already closed and rejected by their maker. And so that's one of the, that's what, that's what we mean by self-hardening. So what, what would it mean to say you're judicially hardened? Now the word judicial is an act of a judge, obviously, right? God is the judge. And therefore, the judge sitting on his throne sees somebody who's closing their eyes, continuously rebelling against the things of God, growing calloused and hardened. His conscience has become seared that God can remove the light from them. So I've got a little lamp here I've set up here in the hotel room and I'll use this as my analogy. So I've got this lamp here. So the light comes to somebody. Right now, this person's not born without eyes. He has the eyes to see. And so he can look at the light. But let's say he looks at the light and he resists it. He doesn't want to see it. And so he closes his eyes. OK, well, God, so that, that's self that's self hardening. My closing my eyes, that's self hardening. So what would God might do? That would be judicial hardening. OK, uh, God said, well, you're going to close your eyes to the light. I'm going to take the light away, which is exactly what we see in, in Acts chapter uh, 28 when it says they close their eyes. So therefore, otherwise they might see, understand and turn and I would heal them. Therefore, I take the message. I take the light from them and I take it to the Gentiles because they're going to listen. They'll see it. They're not ever seeing and never perceiving. They're not ever hearing and not understanding because they, yes, they're immoral. Yes, they're sinful, but they're not self-righteous and hardened in their rebellion against my voice. And so judicial hardening is, is God's removal of the light from somebody, cutting them off as, as Romans 11 talks about, being cut off in your unbelief and given over to that unbelief. Again, that's not a condition you're born into like the reprobate would be under Calvinism, but it is a condition you can become if you choose to reject the, the truth of God. If you choose freely, I should say even, to reject the things of God, because even Calvinists say, well, yeah, yeah, they're choosing to reject the things of God. But it's not a choice in any meaningful sense of the word, as far as I can tell, because it's it's not a choice that they are really making. It's a choice that God made for them to choose. In other words, God determined their determination. Uh, and that that's not a meaningful choice in my estimation. Now, I understand Calvinists would disagree with that and, and maybe have explanations as to why they would disagree with that. But I, I don't see it. Uh, it does, I do not relate to that, as they say. I cannot I cannot comprehend that as being rational or good.